All right, this is a, <coughs> a pamphlet, a book which was given out by the Lubavitcher Rebbe, <coughs> talking about the importance of this building 770. That's the, the central headquarters of Chabad in the world. <coughs> and the central headquarters of Chabad in the world. <coughs> and the Rebbe is talking about the importance of this. Now, let's just go put everything in a proper perspective over here. <clears throat> As we've done so many times, <clears throat> how important is how important are the Jewish people, right? We see that the Jewish people just don't go away, right? And they've got all these enemies, and nobody can really explain why they have these enemies, you know, why people just hate the Jews, why? You know, what's going on? I mean, all the, the reasons that are given <clears throat> really don't have to hold much water to them. I mean, they're not really, you know, there's a Jewish plot to take over the world and the and Jewish, I mean, these things are just basically ridiculous. You know, it's so, it's so, and even so, so, you know, at least uncover the plot, kill the people who are in the plot. No, everybody's in the plot. All the Jewish people, they're all part of this plot. Every Jew, they look like normal people. They don't know what you're talking about. They're talking about because they're all covering it up. They're really part of the plot. I mean, this is ridiculous. It's just stupid. It doesn't make any sense. <clears throat> and they all have the, they all have the money. I know there's all these reasons and things like that. You read the books of Hitler and Mein Kampf. You know, there'd be inside of every the evil thing. There's a Jew and a Jew. Good. So you want to find one Jew, two Jews? I don't know. Even if that's true, but all the Jews of it. So the fact of the matter is the Jews are God's representatives. They're God's representatives, and there's only one God. He creates the world. There's only one creation. That's the world. Even if you want to see there's other planets or other dimensions, they're all being created by God. And every human being is being created by God. And when people realize this, then the world will rule, run smoothly. <clears throat> the world will run smoothly. <clears throat> Okay, and in the Torah, there are also what's called the, the commandments, the seven commandments of Noahide commandments, which these are universal commandments, <clears throat> which basically are the only commands that come directly from God to all mankind, the creator's instructions. That's it. There's a lot of religions. They were made by inspired people, but they do not, God did not talk to, to the, everybody. God spoke to everyone, Right. One person comes out from the desert or from a mountain and someone says, this is the truth. So, okay, everybody believes him because, why? Because everybody believes him, right? As soon as a certain critical mass of people start to believe, then people just are growing, to, growing together, like the sky is falling, you know. But Judaism, God spoke to two, three million people. They all heard it, right? 600,000 just men from the ages of 20 up, and they all heard it. Everyone heard God speaking. And this has been passed down from generation to generation. So <clears throat> this is the only singular <clears throat> this, the directions for the world, right? Only directions in the world are, and those religions that claim that they take the place of Judaism, right? They, they, they have all sorts of loopholes and things like that. They can do whatever they want to, basically, basically. So the Torah is the only real blueprint for the world. So the Jewish people, they're as small as they are, and as few as they are, they have it. And among the Jews, there's not that many Jews that really believe in this. And even the ones that believe in it, there's not that many that actually take it seriously. And they actually imp implement this in their day-to-day -day life. So that's the idea of the Jewish people. And that's the idea you know, to, to, to put meaning in the world. And that's the idea of Chabad, is to wake up the Jewish people. Wake up all the Jews. The center <clears throat> of Chabad is in this building called 770 Eastern Parkway in, in Brooklyn, New York. And from there, all of these shalukim go all over the world to wake Jews up. There's nothing like it in the world, nothing even vaguely like it. Nothing like it. To go to these, who knows, what do they call them, God-forsaken places, and to say that they're not forsaken. Exactly the opposite. And they arouse Judaism there, and they arouse Jews, and they benefit the whole place, benefit the places. And thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of Jews have been brought to Jewish awareness by these Chabad shluchim. 
despite all the enemies and the enemies within and the enemies without and other. <clears throat> so there's a sentence that says, <clears throat> there's a Gomorrah, a Gomorrah, a, a Talmud <clears throat> in Megillah. And it talks about this. And it says that it, there's there's a place called, now that there's no holy temple, so there's like a holy temple outside of Israel. The Jews always have one central place from which comes Torah to all the Jewish people. And that's called Beit Rabbeinu Sheba Babel. There's one synagogue that from this synagogue, learning and inspiration and Judaism comes to the whole world, not just to the religious Jews, to all the Jews in the world. <clears throat> okay, so now the Rebbe is talking about, the, on the Pasuk it says, mikdash me'at, I will be for them. This is a sentence in where? In Jeremiah. Let's see what it says. Yechezkel. I'm sorry, I made a mistake. Yechezkel. Ezekiel. A sentence in Ezekiel. God says, I will be to them Miktash <clears throat> Me'at, a, sm a, a small holy temple, Ba'artzot, in the lands, Asher Bo'ushan, where they go. Shagam Chutzlar, it's also outside of Israel, where the Jews have been living in exile for like 2,000 years almost. Ba'artzot, Asher Bo'ulam, the Makom Ubizman, in the time of the exile. Right now, we, what do we believe? What do we mean this exile? We believe Mashiach is going to cause the third temple to come from heaven, and all it will draw all of the Jews from all the world to the Holy Land. Why? Because the Holy Temple is the only place that you can do all the commandments, and all of the Jews in the world will want to do all the commandments, and that's the only way they can do it. And that'll draw them. The Temple will draw them to Israel to do the commandments. <clears throat> but meanwhile, while they, are, while, they, while, while they are outside of Israel, they have what's called a mikdash me'at, a small temple, me'ain v'dugmas, a mikdash agadol, something like the third temple, which is in Jerusalem, which will be in Jerusalem, and the first and the second ones that were in Jerusalem. Tanya, and it will be secondary to the holy temple. It says in the Gomorrah, Omer Rabbi Yitzchak, Says Rabbi Yitzchak, he explains the sentence in Ezekiel. Says Rabbi Yitzchak, Elu Beit Knesset, Beit Midrashes. These are the places of prayer and the places of learning, which are in Bavel. <clears throat> Bavel after the first temple was destroyed. <clears throat> Even though these rabbis were not talking, they were talking about the time of the second temple. Rabbi, Rabbi, um, Rabbi Elazar or Omar, Zeb Beit Rabbeinu This is one. Rabbi Elazar said, this is one central synagogue, which is in Babel. Babel is a general name for Jewish people for exile, wherever the Jews are. <clears throat> we could say that Rabbi, Rabbi Yitzchak and Rabbi Elazar, that Rabbi Yitzchak and Rabbi Elazar, they're not arguing. I know Shagam, that's Rabbi Elazar, that also even according to the opinion of Rabbi Elazar, that all of the synagogues are called Mikdash Me'at, they're all called a small temple. And according to Rabbi Yitzchak, the main completion and, how do you say, manifestation of this small temple that's going to be in the time of exile is Beit Rabbeinu. So they both agree the same thing. Both of them agree that every synagogue is called a small temple, small holy temple. But there's going to be one that's going to be the main one. That's the real comparison to the Holy Temple in Jerusalem. That's why it's called Beit Rabbeinu, the house of our rabbi. Why the house of our rabbi? Say the house of the Jews. This is like it says, why Rabbeinu? Why a rabbi? Because it teaches Torah. The Talmud was a rabbi. A rabbi is a person that teaches Torah to his pupils. Beit Rabbeinu. That's the place where Rabbein, where the teacher teaches Torah to his pupils. This is a Beit Midrash, what they call a place of learning Torah. So therefore, it's also a place of prayer. 
Beit Knesset means a house of gathering, people where they gather for prayer. Because for prayer, you're supposed to pray in a, in a group. In Judaism, you're supposed to pray in a group of 10, if you can. More the better. But the, the, the prayer, if you can't pray with 10 people, you can pray alone. But the best way to pray is what's called a minyan, 10 people. Okay, even since the limud with tefillah, since the prayer, learning Torah and prayer has to be in one place. That's what it says it's the best. So therefore, this is a place, Beit Rabbein Shabbat Bavel. This is one central synagogue where Torah and prayer is <clears throat> centered for the whole world. Like it says, Havi Gersinen Bebei Kenista. You could say that this is the places where they would learn <clears throat> is in a place of prayer. And also, conversely, the place where people pray is the place where they learn. <clears throat> well, my Leotera, there's another ad advantage to this place called the Beit Knesset and Beit Midrash. And Beit Rabbeinu, why it's called Beit Rabbeinu, the house of a rabbi. The Gabi Shar Beit Knesset, regarding all the other places of learning, like the rabbi say, my what does it say? Oyev Hashem, Sharitzium, Mikomish Kanot Yaakov. It says, God loves the gates of Zion from all of the other places where the Jews live. Oyev Hashem is Shari Mitsuyani Balacha. It says, what does it mean? Sharitzion. The Shari means the gates which are ornamented with law. Yoter mi beti kinesi ro beti midrashas more than any of the other places of prayer and learning. What does this mean? Mi yom shene harav a beti midrash from the time that the holy temple was destroyed. Ain lo the kodesh baruch hu. God does not have but olamu in his world. Ela arba amot shal halacha only where there is law, the law of the Torah. Now we can't underestimate. We can't. How do you say? It? Um, undervalue the importance of the Torah. The Torah is not just a religious book for the Jews. The Torah is much, much more than that. Let's begin with the fact that the Torah is the blueprint for the creation of the world. The Torah is the blueprint of the creation of the world. <clears throat> the world was created for the Jews to learn it. Learning Torah, that's what all these yeshivas are. Cost oh, billions and billions of dollars to keep these yeshivas going, and they feed the the boys that are learning there, and they. <clears throat> so you can say, what do you what do you have to have that? What do you have to have that these places for? Let everybody go out and work. So that is work. That's the work that's really keeping the world going. But it's very very undervalued. <clears throat> People don't appreciate the Im tremendous importance and 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 blessing that the world gets from everyone learning Torah, when Torah is learned. But not everyone, even anyone learning Torah. That's what it says. That since the Holy Temple was destroyed, the Holy Temple used to be the source of all prosperity, etc., in the world. When the base of Middash, when the Holy Temple was destroyed, so now it says, where does God shine through the world? <coughs> it says, Arba Amos, means in, in the area, whenever Torah is learned. The Bezaman Shabbat Mikdash Kayan, the time when the Torah, when the Holy Temple existed, Hayasham, Lishkata Gazit. There was a place called the Lishkata Gazit, that there was the Sanhedrin, and they would decide all the laws. There were laws, all the laws would come because of the Sanhedrin. Be mine, and what it, Vada Shechina Shoi, and certainly that was where God's presence was found. That was in the time of the Beit HaMikdash, of the Holy Temple. Actually, but now that the Holy Temple was destroyed, and in the part of the Holy Temple was the Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin was in one part of the Holy Temple, the Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin was 71 <clears throat> great genius men. All of them had the power to raise the dead. And they were the ones that decided the laws of the <clears throat> Judaism. Now that the Holy Temple is destroyed, <clears throat> this, this area, wherever Torah is learned, 
Makam Kavu, it's a set place, Shimimena Yotze Horon, there comes out teaching to all of the city, city. <coughs> and therefore, prayer should also be in this place where Torah is learned. That's the idea of Beit Rubenu. That's the idea of the house of our teacher outside of Israel. Because this special quality of a place where there is prayer and a place where there is learning Torah in this house of our teacher, in other words, this main synagogue which is outside of Israel, the Gabi Shark based the Knesset of Beit Midrash Shabbat in regard to the others, Harihu Mikdash Me'at. It is called a little holy temple. Ha'ikri. All synagogues are, but they're called genuine synagogues. We're not talking about reform, conservative. Genuine, genuine synagogue. Because they keep all the Torah and they pray to get to God. It's called <clears throat> a small temple. Ha'ikri. That was, this is called the main small temple. Shenoten HaKadosh Baruch Hu that God gave to the Jewish people in the time of exile to moor it in the place, temporarily in the place, of Mikdash HaGadol B'Yishalayim in the Holy Temple of Jerusalem. <coughs> so what's the Rebbe saying? The Rebbe is saying over here that when there was a Holy Temple in Israel, the Holy Temple was the source of Torah learning. And it was the source of law. And it was the source of prayer. And it was the proof that God exists. And that God listens to our prayers and that God cares about the world. That's why he gave his, the law to the world, the Torah. And there's a big commandment to learn the Torah and to teach the Torah. But now the Holy Temple is destroyed. So what do we do now? What do we do? Where? So it says there's always a place outside of Israel. The Jews have been scattered outside of Israel. And that place is designed to <clears throat> strengthen Judaism, strengthen Torah, strengthen prayer, strengthen the awareness of God, in all of the Jewish people, just like the, the Holy Temple did. Of course, that's not a, a replacement, it's just temporary. <coughs> it's not really the same thing. But nevertheless, it's as, it's as close as we can get right now. Yeshlav, Iraya, we can bring a proof, the Chiluki Medregos, to these different levels of Mikdash Me'at, of this small temple from what it says in the beginning when God says he rests his presence in the Jewish people. Just give me one moment, please. I'll be right back. Just want to take a short break. <clears throat> so, says the Rebbe, <clears throat> there is one that's promised to us that there will always be one central major place, synagogue, place of learning outside of Israel in the time of exile, that from there will come learning, Torah, inspiration, prayer, awareness of God, awareness of Judaism, encouraging to do the Torah and the commandments outside of Israel, there will be one place. And that place is called the house of our teacher, Beit Rabbeinu, because it will teach Torah to everyone in the world and wake up the Jews. There has to be such a place, and this will be so that, <clears throat> the, 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 how do you say, the temporary holy temple until the third one is built. The Yeshla of Uriah, we can bring a proof that there's these, these different levels of a small temple from what it says in the beginning over there in the Talmud, <clears throat> where it says, talks about God's presence resting in the Jewish people in time of exile, and it says over there like this, Bakal makom shagolu shechina, golu, Every place the Jewish people went, God's presence is with them. When the Jewish people were in Egypt, the Shekhinah was with them. When the Jewish people, the first temple was destroyed, they went to Babylon, the Shekhinah was with them. God's presence. Shekhinah means God's presence. But Babel says in the Gomorrah, Babel, where was it? Omar Abaya, the Bay Kanishta the Hutzal. Ba Abaya said it was in the holy, in the in the the uh, the synagogue, the great the great synagogue that was in the city of Hutzel, a place in, in Babylon, <clears throat> and also in the Bay Kanishta, the Shaf Visiv, 
in a place of shav visiv in Nardaya. That's what it said. <clears throat> but don't tame, don't say hachabacha. Don't say it was in both places at the same time. Ella zimni nacha. Sometimes it was here and sometimes it was there. The chiddush, the novelty is that the shechina is with them, even in exile. It comes to tell us that the revelation of God's presence in these special places, it was like in the tabernacle and in the temple. <coughs> in this place, where is it now? The Beit HaKenesi, the Beit HaMidrashas. Of course, when there was a holy temple <coughs> and the <beer. coughs> The people didn't go into all the, the rooms. There was a holy of holy. Only the, 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 the high priest could go in once a year, and etc. And of course, in our synagogues, you can go into anywhere you want to. But nevertheless, the fact is that, that what is unique is in the holy temple, there was prayer. Then there was also sacrifices, which is another form of prayer. And there was the Sanhedrin where there was Torah was learned. So it is now also the same thing. There is always going to be such a thing with the, with the Jewish people. Just like the Jewish people cannot exist without the Torah, the Jewish people cannot exist without Moses, the Jewish people cannot exist without a holy temple. <clears throat> and there's always going to be a holy temple in the Jewish people, with the Jewish people, and it'll be outside of Israel, not permanent, not permanent, only temporary. Shenikrin, it's called Mikdash Mat, it's called a small holy temple. <clears throat> That's how it's it, it's talked about in this uh, in this topic that's discussed in the Gomorrah in the Talmud Megillah. So according to this, Yeshlom, we can say the Hemshek that what this kid says in the continuation of the Talmud, where was it? It says the Talmud asks, where was this holy special place in Babel? It was in the Bekanishta the Hutzel, and in the Bekanishla of Dashaf. Of the Shafin, etc. The Yasiv Nardai says these places, these special places. So it's talking about the revelation of God's presence in a way that was higher <coughs> <coughs> higher than it was in any of the other synagogues, in any of the other synagogues which were in Babylon. There was thousands of synagogues in Babylon. The Jewish people were there, they sat and they learned Torah. Nevertheless, there was one or one or two special places where the Shekhinah would be, and only one of these places at a time would be the place where God's presence would be revealed. It was a place in Nikar that it, you could, it was recognizable that it, God's presence was there. And even more, <clears throat> there is a special place where it is in the, it's like the, how do you say, the replacement for the holy temple in Jerusalem, temporary replacement for the temple in Jerusalem. Makom Hashem, the place where God will be found. Shabu Ikra of Gina that there is the main revelation of God's Shekhinah. Therefore, Lo Tema don't say that God's presence was revealed in all of these synagogues or all of the big ones. <clears throat> no, sometimes it's here, sometimes it's there. This, that God's presence is revealed sometimes in one place and sometimes in another. So we see that there is always a special place. Excuse me one second. <clears throat> That's the special in the names of the places. The holy temple of Dashaf and Vyasiv Benardaya. What does it mean? Shaf Vyasiv. Shaf means to move. The word shaf means shenasa, that it moved. The place migdash, the yasiv means that it moved there. And it settled down there. <clears throat> shaf in Aramaic means shaf, shaf miduchte, means it moved. And yasiv means to be settled. Namely, the revelation of God's presence, which was in the Holy Temple in Jerusalem and nowhere else, it moved. And it went to a special place in Babylon, in the place of the temple which was in Jerusalem. And for this is understood, and where the majority of the Jewish people are, that's where this temple is. This, I say, substitute temple, 
when all the Jews come back to Israel, so they'll be they'll be because the temple will be here. When we move and it's understood, also revela, re, 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 in regard to Mikdash the small temple, <clears throat> which is including the idea of <clears throat> the small temple, which is in every synagogue and every place of learning in Babylon, every place. Every place where Jewish people genuinely pray to God and genuinely sit and learn Torah, that place is also called a small temple. But there's just one main one. There is a small temple, but there is the main small temple, small holy temple, in the place that's in the place of the big holy temple in Jerusalem, Beit Rabbeinu Shabbat And the Rebbe is going to say, and we're going to come back to this tomorrow. That this is the Chabad headquarters in Brooklyn, and that this is the holy temple outside of Israel that's going to try to <clears throat> influence all the Jews to return to their senses so that the real permanent Beit HaMikdash, the third one, will be built in Jerusalem. Shinnasa <clears throat> Mikdash V'yashev Sham that the holy temple moved <clears throat> when the Jewish people were exiled, and the holy temple moved, and the, the Shekhinah was with the Jewish people wherever they go. And now the Rebbe says, says that this holy temple is 770 Eastern Parkway. That's the place. <clears throat> Proof. We'll learn about this next week. Now let's learn, I mean tomorrow, I'm sorry, tomorrow. Let's learn the Yom Yom. <clears throat> <clears throat> we have three <clears throat> tools love of God love of the Torah and love of the Jewish people and with these three tools <clears throat> students of the Torah should approach serving God working on what's called the vineyard of Hashem in Hebrew it comes out better but Karen Hashem Sabot <clears throat> Namely what? That all the Jewish people are potentially like grapes filled with fine wine. <clears throat> we have to work in this vineyard to bring the hearts of all the Jewish people closer to observing, actually doing the commandments and setting times for learning Torah. They have to do this without <clears throat> paying any attention to politics or different groups. The absolute truth is that the heart of the Jewish people, every Jew is a wellspring, a source of living waters. And there is a, an agreement. God made an agreement, a promise, that if you make effort and if you advertise, then there's always going to be results. <clears throat> We're trying to spread Judaism to all the Jews, wake up all the Jews. It seems impossible, says the Rebbe, <clears throat> Also, if you look at a dry piece of land, you never dream that would come out from this dry piece of land. Delicious grapes. You can squeeze the grapes. There's wine. Makes you happy. It's just a piece of, of dirt. What's there? Absolutely nothing. You can't eat the dirt. There's no sweetness there. It won't get you happy to eat the dirt. But if you work on the dirt, miraculously grow up grapes, vine, a vineyard. You have to make, make, get rid of the, 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 the weeds and things, but you have to work. If you do the work, then you're promised that there's going to be results. And here we're talking about the vineyard as the Jewish people. <clears throat> if you make effort and if you advertise, don't keep it to yourself, then for sure there will be fruits. Have a good day with Mashiach now. See you today at 3 o'clock. We're continuing learning the Megillah, Megillah's Esther.